Hi guys, Aileen here from Hunger and Happiness. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I've done an update and seeing as it's summer now, I thought it's time for another one. So I will just do a walk through the garden and show you what's growing. Okay, starting with the front garden, this one has some tomatoes, some kamo kamo, some herbs. I love kamo kamo, it grows so rampantly and so quickly. It's a bit like zucchini if you haven't had it before, but they're a bit bigger. And here are some yellow beefsteak tomatoes. This is a variety called Chef's Choice and it's a hybrid variety that I started from seed back in August. So my tomatoes are quite slow this year because of the cold uh, nights we had last month but they are starting to come now. And then this variety does take quite a while to ripen especially without a glass house because it's quite big. In this little corner are some seedlings that my youngest son, Lucas, has planted. He sowed them in school, so there's just some cherry tomatoes and he's got a broccoli in there and some basil and some borage. So he looks after this bit. Got an artichoke here that I let go to flower because the bees love it and it's just such a vibrant purple. Now coming over to the other side, so this is still the front garden, still facing the street, but just the opposite side. And it's early in the morning and it doesn't have sun on it yet, but it gets better sun than any other part of my garden. Our things are very squished in here because it is small, but we make it work. These are some New Zealand yams, um, also known as ochre. Now I've got those growing in pots here. I've also got some growing just in the garden, but they do grow a little bit invasively in the sense that if you leave uh, any yams behind after harvesting they will sprout again next year so you kind of have to remove every single piece if you don't want them growing again. But the part that I have them growing in my garden is uh, like a weedy part anyway so I'm quite happy to let them sprawl. So that's just here by the river uh, which usually would be yeah, covered in weeds so I may as well put some plants there that I actually want. finally got pears growing this year. So this is my dwarf bell pear tree, which is a, a self-pollinating variety, which is quite rare for a pear tree. Here are some celery that I planted um, seedlings last month. So that I like to plant them early on so they have all summer to kind of fatten up and grow big. And then when the winter comes, they're already like a really decent size to harvest from. Now this chili plant is a Thai chili that I started from seed also in August and I grew it uh, inside all the way up until like last month so it's really big because it was growing inside. I actually recently moved one of my little capsicum plants inside um, to do the same so hopefully they can get nice and big because our living room gets heaps of sun streaming in throughout the day. Here is one of my many cucumber plants. We have a lot of them this year. Last year I totally did not plant enough and I didn't have enough to preserve, so this year I'm not making that mistake again. Everything is planted all over the place in my garden all the time. Um, some of my cucumbers are climbing, some of them are not. These ones are climbing up a trellis. Here are some of the tomatoes that are, are squished in this garden and um, because things are so close together I have to be quite vigilant with uh, pruning my tomatoes so that means moving, removing the laterals which are like the little shoots that grow on the elbows of the tomatoes but also any of the overlapping leaves because they are just so close together. Um, these have been quite heavily pruned, they're very tall but quite skinny because I remove a lot of the leaves, you can see here down by the stem. 
I do the same kind of pruning with my zucchinis because they also grow very big. This one here um, has some white uh, spottings on its leaves so don't get that confused with powdery mildew, I promise it's not. Um, but yeah I have to prune these back as well. I haven't done this one for a while um, so I've got to get onto that today. But you can see here down by the stem this is where I usually chop the leaves back. And it doesn't matter that you chop them back, um, the plant will grow new leaves very very quickly. Here is another zucchini growing. This one was sown a little bit later. That's why it's smaller. It just helps to stagger the harvest. And here is my kumara patch, which is sweet potato, and I've got some corn growing alongside that. This is a red popping corn variety. And bordering this little kumara patch, I also have some sunflowers that I've grown from seed. So they haven't flowered yet, but when they do, I think they're going to be really beautiful having a nice little yellow border. And then behind those are all my coriander plants that have gone to seed. And this is quite good because we use the seeds as well as the actual coriander. Um, so the seeds are delicious when they're green, really flavorful, or you can let them dry and then use them as ground coriander. And if you want to do some seed saving, you just can let the seeds become light, light brown and then chop the whole plant down and hang it upside down to further dry inside. And then the seeds can just be stored in like a brown paper bag until you're ready to sow them. I'm just gonna let them self-seed right where they are, as well as just taking a few handfuls and sprinkling them around the garden. I've got a tamarillo here that was self-seeded in the compost. This one's not fruiting yet, but I do have one that is, and I'll show you that later on in the video. And here are some dahlias and a peach tree. This is a dwarf peach and it does have some peaches on there, so I will be netting this tree really soon. It's a cherry tomato variety, but it's just started fruiting. Here are my dahlias, so this is my favourite one, it's a white pom-pom one, but I have lots. So the pom-pom one I actually bought from tubers, but these other ones were all grown from seed. Got this rose as well that has these huge flower heads, and this is a rose that I grew from a cutting, just jammed it in the ground a few years ago and it has grown really well. Here is my little dwarf nectarine tree, but unfortunately something has been eating my fruits. It's not birds, I think it's maybe rats. Um, so I'm going to be taking the fruit off and salvaging what I can. And in these buckets I have some more kumara growing. I just want to see what does better, the buckets that I can move to the sunnier spots as opposed to the um, stuff in the ground that it, it gets sun for most of the day but not ideal sun hours. So I'm just wanting to see if these buckets will do better. Oh and then here are the earth gems. So those are those tubers, if you saw my um, August video, tubers that I bought from the supermarket. Um, they're beautiful colours and I just sprouted those and planted them. I've never grown them before so this will be my first year. See what they're like. All this foliage is edible as well. Kind of reminds me of purslane if you've had that before. Like a quite a thick succulent leaf. A lot of flavour. And coming up to the middle garden. So this one doesn't have any sun at this time of the morning that I'm filming. But it will get it later on. Now this is predominantly parsnips and beans. So if you've seen my previous videos, you would know that I used to have my bean arches right at the top garden, but I've recently moved them down here. 
Um, it has meant that my bean harvest has been slower because I started the seedlings off later, but they are now taking off. So hopefully I'll be having beans very soon. parsnips in this garden were sown in early spring so they have lots of time to fatten up before winter comes because once winter comes this garden loses all the sun so I really need them to be a decent size before then. Oh and here are some more earth gems. I really had a lot from the supermarket so I needed to just kind of put them everywhere in the garden and I've got some other bean seedlings that are growing. where I've got that fruiting tamarillo. Now this tamarillo always has some sort of fungal disease going on, so it always looks like it's about to die, but it's not, and it actually fruits. So these are the stairs that lead to the top garden. Now, if you're familiar with my garden, you'll know that this top garden here is southeast facing, and in New Zealand that means it doesn't get good sun. Like in winter, it gets nothing pretty much. Um, but in summer, when the sun is higher, it does. That's when my um, growing really gets going. So I'll show you what's growing in here. At the back here, under the netting, I have some cabbages. So there's a huge variety of things. Uh, here are some more parsnips and they self-seeded. Well, I had a parsnip growing up here that went to seed um, a while back and then I would have dropped a lot of the seeds when I took the seed head off. So they've just grown here. And I've got some yakon. This is another underground tuber and I've got some up there as well. Here is another sunflower border. They haven't bloomed yet, but hopefully soon. And another zucchini. And another one here. All right, and I've got some corn growing here. So this is one of my later planted corns. So that's why they're quite small. It's a red popping corn again. And a random cabbage. And under the netting here is some winter sprouting purple broccoli. So this one takes quite a while to establish itself, so I started seeds off of these in October. And I've got a kamal kamal growing again um, alongside some more corn. And then here is my earliest planted corn, and this is just a sweet corn, just a normal yellow one. And when you're planting different varieties of corn, you just have to be careful with, about cross-pollination because if the two different varieties are flowering at the same time, they will cross-pollinate and you'll have different kinds of corn kernels growing in your cobs. Here are some carrots, 
I've recently sown some more carrots um, to do some leaf growing over summer so that we can harvest them during autumn and winter. And here is that big kamal kamal that has made its way to the Fijoa tree. It's growing all the way down into the ferns. Got lots of uh, Fijoas growing here. It's like a Fijoa hedge. We put those in when we first moved in because uh, it's quite a high terrace that we're standing on. It was quite a bit of a drop, so I wanted to have something to block the kids from falling. And they didn't fruit for a while because they were grown from, from like seeds uh, as opposed to being grafted. But they started fruiting last year for the first time, which is great. And up this bit here, I have some grapes growing there. And then I also have a passion fruit up there, but this section here has sun now, but by like late morning it will lose it. So the things growing up here, yeah, don't get ideal sun hours. Like I have some grapes growing here for the first time this year, but they, yeah, not many. <laughs> but yeah, considering the lack of sun, I'm pretty happy with whatever I get. Here is my, my New Zealand cranberry. Um, it always does really well, and I just think it is just such a beautiful plant. You can make like jam and stuff from the berries, but we just tend to eat them fresh. They will be ready to harvest around March. got some marigolds growing here and some Brussels sprouts. I started seeds for the sprouts in October and right now I'm on manual caterpillar duty because they are not under netting yet. And here are some leek seedlings. I started the seeds for these back in October as well but I've planted them out now so they have all of summer to grow nice and fat before winter comes. Here is a silver beet that I'm letting go to seed. I'll do a mix of seed saving and then also just letting the wind disperse the seeds. I always like having little seedlings of silver beet pop up in the garden, I can always use them. I've got a couple of red onions here that are just starting to fatten up now. These are always quite slow in my garden uh, because of the sun. And that is about it. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I'm going to be enjoying the rest of summer and I hope you are too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.